And what's going on? It's your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab, and I'm back on another one using Ableton Live 9 Suite right now. Had some VIP members hit me up. They were wanting to know how to get the host transport control set up with Ableton Live 9. And I'll go ahead and I'll get that uh, set up real fast for you and show you how you can get that set up and get you up and running in no time. Um, because basically with Ableton Live 9 Suite, um, it's coming with like 3,000 sounds. Uh, it's basically giving you a full range of vintage synths, uh, drum kits, and one-shot samples, uh, acoustic instruments, and I think like 4,000 loops. Uh, it also includes Max for Live, which is free, which before we had to um, pay for. So now it comes with it, which gives you full access to all of um, 900 some odd devices uh, built by Max for uh, the live community. All right, so we get like. 24 instruments and effects um, new features include session view automation which makes it easy to in, uh, improvise with your musical ideas and also with live's new browser we spend less time finding sounds and more time making music of course you also can convert your favorite drum breaks um, to MIDI I like that new feature um, actually I'm, I'm loving it actually you actually can take you know actual physical audio uh, files such as this file here and actually convert the harmony or the melody to MIDI notes or if you're beatboxing or singing it's kind of tight you can get really creative with that you know you can really let your imagination go wild with that um, so let's see let where, where do we begin all right let's start with getting the host transport control set up first um, you're gonna need one basic file right here this is the update from native instruments you have to go to the native instruments website pick this up it's a machine template update for live you're going to see the template support files. Of course, here's Live 8, here's Live 9, Machine and Machine MK2, whatever control you got. Or you might just want to drop both of them in there, and it's up to you. And you have the template file here for the controller editor. Now, my VIP members, they already know I have tons of controller editor templates inside the VIP database. It's a one-time charge, $9.99. So I have a lot, of, a lot of templates in there that are pretty much pre-mapped, so you don't have to mess around with the mappings. But this... Uh, templates here are good for a good start remember you're not stuck in stone with that you can make adjustments on that so what so basically what you want to do is you want to take that file and you want to get it set up in your hard drive because right here where it says options and preferences you see right there where it says control surface machine you want to select that because basically here is where you're going to select you know whatever you're using to control live whether it be a MIDI controller machine you know whatever the case may be the list defaults to these here but you want to make sure that you have machine and or machine mk2 um, set right here so to get that or rather to get that to show up let me just go in the hard drive of my computer because I think once you do it you might have to um, restart live I'm not I'm not really sure but I'm on my little touchpad here on my laptop so you have to forgive me if it's moving kind of slow here all right where you want to drop that file right here you can see local disk program files 86 ableton i'm on windows 864 right now just for the sake of the video you know if you're in a mac of course you would download the mac file you go under resources and you see right here midi remote scripts now you have a templates um file here again this is where i drop mine not necessarily saying that you have to but for me it works because it's just easier for me to find if I'm in live. I just, I don't know. It, it just, it just jazzes like that in my mind. You know, you can store yours wherever, but I, I, I drop mine in there where it says templates, and so that's for the controller editor mappings. Now for the MIDI remote scripts, again, here's all all the uh, defaults that come with uh, Live Nine. You want to make sure that you drop the machine one here and or the MK2 one here. You know, depending on whatever controller you're using. So then that way live could recognize it as a MIDI device to control MIDI inside live. So for example, let me just pull this down. Okay, here's machine. Now on your hardware controller, you want to select shift MIDI to control live because the erase button, let me pull this up here so you understand a lot better. Okay, what happens is Okay, here's the MK2 uh, script, and you can see right here it it's it has the host transport control highlighted in green. That control, the templates, right here has to be selected. Host transport control right there, because I think it defaults like when you open it's going to be like that. 
So you want to go in there, you want to hit host transport control. All right. And then here's your assignments here. If you want to, you know, if you're on the MK2, you know, you're assigned your mappings. You know, whether you're on MK1 or MK2, it works the same. You have to have it on host um, transport control. So let me get this out the way and I'll show you what I mean. And uh, if you're on micro there, there's a micro template too. So if you're, if you're using micro and you're, if you're on the native instruments website, make sure that you download the micro uh, template. So now when I hit the, um, the record button here, okay, you see, you see it counting me in, uh, the loop button becomes the metronome. As you can see up here, you see the metronome going on or off. Again, this is all from the machine hardware controller or if I was to hit the, let's say the play button. All right, so that's just a little beat I was uh, working on. But um, here, here's the thing. So you see how it's sequencing down there, machine. So now if I hit shift and MIDI, like so, now it serves a different function. Now when I hit the record button, you see the machine, uh, rather the arm button here, it's arming. I can unarm it, arm it, or I can play. You know, same thing. So that's that's basically how you get that set up. It's pretty fast. It's pretty easy. Just figured I'd mention it. Um, there was one other question I had, which I can address. Getting the VST set up, that same file that I was going into, you want to go. Let me let, let me just do this right quick because I forgot about that question. They were asking me how to get the VSTs inside Ableton. So again, that resource folder. Same thing. See how it says VST right here? I created that. So you want to create a folder that says VST and in this folder is where you put your VSTs. So then what happens is when you're using live, when you go to options, you go to preferences. If you want to go to dang, let me think, where is it at? I think it's on the file folder. Yeah. Right here where it says um VST plus VST plugin custom folder. You want to hit browse and basically select it there. And that's pretty much how you'd get that set up. All right. So one other feature I wanted to show um, live again, I'm not going to show all the new features in live, but I just wanted to show one of the new coolest features in live, um, which I think is one of, is one of the dopest ones because you can take, you can take whether it's on this screen here, whether it's a, a MIDI clip, you can do it there. You can do it here. You can drag audio from your desktop, get the MIDI that way. It doesn't make a difference. You just, you just right click here and you have convert options from harmony, melody or drums to MIDI. Obviously drums to MIDI is going to be, you know, a drum loop, beatboxing, things of that nature, or, or, or rather, or rather even a melody convert to melodies is more like a simple MIDI file. You're going to get like the dumbed down version. It's going to be just the, the melody of, of whatever it's it's converting so it's more simple harmonies for more complex uh midi takes in my opinion uh nine times out of ten to me harmony works better because it gets all the midi notes actually does a job so good you might you have to even like remove some of the um the midi notes because it 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 deals with the pitch and the variations and you know for example if i convert the harmony from this to a new midi track and I just got to give it a second to convert here. You know, I'm running a lot of things, my screen capture and my machine controllers and stuff like that. So just give that a minute to uh, load up. And there it goes. It, it pops in here and it automatically arms the track. It defaults to a grand piano. So it can it can play it uh, from this lane. You could do it that way. And again, you can see right there, let me fold this over so we can see this a lot better. All right. So you see like there's extra MIDI notes going on here. So again, you're gonna have to play around with that. You're gonna have to go in there and really adjust what needs to be adjusted. Um, just for the sake of the video without running too long. So I don't wanna run too long. 
I could take those notes and drop it. For example, I have my Nexus plug in here. I could just take these notes and just boom, I'll just drop it up here. And you know, they, there, there they are down here. Let me just pull up Nexus right quick. You know, I have it set on what uh, club keys. This is a VIP sound lab Nexus to expansion, by the way. You know, my VIP members know how that goes. You guys can, can pick that up off the website. But um, yeah, and then you can just play your, your notes. Okay, hold on one second. Let me, uh, I forgot I got to mute this. Now, of course, this is a different sound, but you know, I'm just, I'm just giving you the idea of that. And I'll just stop it right there. You know, so again, I don't want to run so long in the video, but you get the idea. It's taking those MIDI notes and now I can play them in Nexus. And of course, there's just too much going on. So I have to go in there and do a little editing to get it. But it captured the harmony pretty good. It sounds the same as the audio. And again, some of the other cool tricks you can do. You can record yourself on a microphone like beatboxing, like a drum beat, get those MIDI notes. So it, it's it's a time saver and it's cool. So um yeah, that that's one of the new features of Ableton Live that I'm loving right now. Probably one of the the, um, the dopest uh, features anyway. Um, so that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.